Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Top 5 here on Press TV. A former U.S. ambassador to Iraq says ISIL is the 6.0 version of Al-Qaeda since it's better organized and better funded. Ryan Crocker said the group is much bigger and better funded and equipped than Al-Qaeda. He added that Washington should consider launching targeted airstrikes against the group's strongholds. He also criticized the United States' policies in Iraq, saying that disengagement could have graver results than engagement in the first place. He added that Washington should move both politically and militarily to help Iraqis get back on a stable course. Earlier sources revealed that U.S. military instructors trained Takfidi militants at a secret base in Jordan in 2012. The same terrorists are now killing civilians and waging war in Iraq. For more on this, let's go to Washington and talk to Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley, author and historian. Welcome, sir. Uh, Dr. Tarpley, Ryan Crocker's assessment depicts a very urgent situation that needs to be dealt with very quickly. But at the same time, uh, many of Washington's allies in the region, not to mention the U.S. itself, have been involved in nurturing this very threat. Uh, why does uh, Crocker fail to mention this fact? Well, Ryan Crocker, we have to remember, was one of the people that uh, John McCain, the senator, uh, demanded be put in charge of all U.S. foreign and security policy a couple of weeks ago. McCain uh, attacking Obama as not enough of a warmonger, said that he wanted General David Petraeus, General uh, Keane, and Ryan Crocker put in charge of everything. And we have to remember that Ryan Crocker was the ambassador of the surge, that is to say, of the 2007-2008 uh, increase in U.S. occupation forces in Iraq, which, uh, which uh, Bush and Cheney uh, imposed. So he's a very dubious character. But here's the thing that I would point out. The United States has never hesitated to bomb other countries. They are trigger happy and uh, shoot from the hip. In this case, we have this interesting contradiction. On the one hand, we're told that ISIS is the end of the world. It's catastrophic. It's, uh, it's, it's simply the apocalypse. But at the same time, there's no bombing. Uh, and it seems to me that uh, what, you, what you see is that the U.S. is trying to use the existence of ISIS, which the U.S., British, French, Saudis, and Turks have created, but to use uh, the ISIS as a means of getting rid of the existing government of uh, of, of Iraq, of Maliki. The, the, the U.S. position is ISIS is the end of the world, but we have to have Maliki out, otherwise we won't do anything. And naturally, Putin has seen that contradiction and come in uh, offering these uh, used but quite effective uh, aircraft that he has supplied to Iraq. And of course, how big is the threat uh, that these terrorists will come and attack on U.S. soil? I think there's uh, an attempt to, uh, to exaggerate that. I think you've got the usual suspects, the kinds of contractors who are interested in selling security equipment to airports and, uh, and things like that, who are coming out of the woodwork and trying to cash in on this uh, situation. Uh, and of course, the idea that 9-11 uh, was something conducted from a cave in Afghanistan this mythology is unfortunately still uh, with us, and, and now it's, there's an attempt to kind of um, revive it. Uh, but again, if, if you look at, uh, suppose you're an ISIS militant, as long as you're in Syria, an ISIS militant is still considered a hero of democracy by the U.S., but as soon as that ISIS fighter crosses into Iraq, then they become a threat to world civilization. And I think the obvious thing to do for the U.S. is indeed not to bomb anybody, but to work with existing governments to strengthen the Assad government in Syria and the Maliki government in Iraq and, and let those governments restore law and order in their own territory. That would be the, the best thing. But of course, it means that the U.S. should not provide $500 million to that infamous camp in Jordan, which appears to be where uh, some of the main people in ISIS were, were trained. And there's also this question of Baghdadi, now the, now the leader of this self-proclaimed caliphate. Uh, Baghdadi has all of the earmarks of somebody who's acting as a double agent for the U.S. 
somebody who was trained to do that during his four years in a prison camp. Why doesn't the U.S. tell Baghdadi also to, uh, to cool it? And while we're at it, tell the Saudis to stop supplying money and logistics. If you did that, ISIS would deflate, I think, rather rapidly. All right, we'll leave it there for the time. Many thanks to Dr. Webster Griffin-Topley, author and historian from Washington. Thanks for your time there, sir.